Mecca to Jerusalem and back. Actually, Ibn, Ibn Hajar, Ibn Hajar in discussing this issue in his explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari, he mentions a narration where initially, before the Prophet told everybody in Mecca, Abu Jahal actually met the Prophet alone, alayhi salam. And the Prophet told him about this. Because he said to the Prophet, you know, and, 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 and this was really sarcastic from him. So, you know, what's new? Did you receive any new revelation? What's new? And the Prophet says, you know what? I went to Al-Aqsa and I came back in one night, last night. He said, really? Abu Jahal, the Prophet says, yes. Abu Jahal said, look, if I call your people, Quraysh, would you tell them the same thing? He's, the Prophet said, yes, so that he called everybody. Because he believed, right? That either the Prophet would try to change his story, or the people would know that the Prophet is, you know, out of his mind. So he called Quraysh. And he told them, he says, look, you know, your, your, your brother has something to say. And the Prophet told them the same thing. He says, look, last night I went to Al-Aqsa and back. And of course, most of the people did not believe. They didn't believe. Because you see, they understood that he meant he went body and soul. And Quraysh knows to travel from Mecca to Syria to do trade, it takes them weeks to go one way and weeks to come back the other way. So they understood that for your body to travel this distance, you can't do it in one night. Impossible. That's why they doubted him. If they understood he meant his soul alone went, or that it was just a dream, then they would not argue because your soul can go, mashallah, anywhere. No big deal. Dreams, subhanAllah, we dream all the readers' dreams every time. So in a dream, it's not impossible to happen. Your soul alone is not impossible. But for the body as well, that's where the problem is. <coughs> they doubted the Prophet That's when the Prophet even told them, guys, look, there's this caravan coming to Mecca. Ask them, all right, if their water, because he drank water and they were sleeping and he, the Prophet says he left it covered. They didn't leave it covered. Some of their camels had run away. The Prophet even told them, the camels run away and where you can find them. Ask them. And when the caravan came into Mecca, the, the people verified that these things didn't happen. They found their water covered when they didn't cover it. Plus they had lost their camels and they found them in these places. They asked the Prophet to describe for them Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. By the way, brothers and sisters, have you seen pictures of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa? Anybody, every, anybody here has not seen a picture of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa? Yes or no? You have never seen a picture? All right, we have to enlighten this brother, this young brother. All right, who has seen a picture of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa? All right, one of you brothers, stand up, stand up. Ah, the brother in the back there. Yes, brother, one, two, three, four, the fifth row. You have your hand up? You're touching your nose, brother. Yes, stand up. <laughs> Quickly describe for us Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. What do you know is Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa? It's a gold circle. It's gold and it's circle. Yes. All right, the rest of you. Is he correct? Is that what he's talking about? What is that he's talking You're shaking your head no. Yes, brother. What is that he's talking about? He's talking about Qubba uh, al-Sakhra. Exactly. Allah barakallahu. Brothers and sisters, what our first brother just described is not Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. It is known as Qubba al-Sakhra. It is said that when the Prophet ﷺ, when he finished praying in the Al-Aqsa Mosque, I'll talk about that just now, to get back on this animal, this burak, he stepped on a rock to climb on the animal. And then as he was leaving, the rock wanted to follow. And the rock did not want any other human being to put their foot on it after the Messenger of Allah had done so. But nevertheless, that masjid that is known as Qubba al-Sakhra is a masjid that was built by Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu when the Muslims opened up and conquered Jerusalem when he was the Khalifa. When the Muslims conquered Jerusalem, they actually asked him, the Khalifa, to come to receive the keys to the city of Jerusalem. Because you know, Jerusalem is a walled city. They have gates, you can enter, you can close the gates. Nobody can come in or go out. 
So they asked him to come himself to receive the keys to the gate, to the city, and he went. And that's where they built what is known as Qubbatul Sakhra. Al-Masjid al remember, when the Prophet ﷺ went there, this Qubbatul Sakhra, this other masjid that Umar built, was not there. Because it was built by Umar. Many years after the Prophet ﷺ died. So when the Prophet went there to that place, there was another building that is still there today. And this is a building that has a silver dome. It's sort of rectangular in shape, and it has a silver dome. Have you heard of the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall that the Jews go to? Okay, so that's one wall of Al Masjid al Aqsa. And the Qubba al Sahra is a little bit north of that. In the same big open area, but there's some distance between the two. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. So Al Masjid al Aqsa is not the Qubba al Sahra. Here is what I've heard. The Jews believe. That's why they want control of Al-Aqsa. That the treasures of Prophet Sulaiman are buried under Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. They want to excavate, they want to break down the Masjid and you know, dig up the, the, the area and, and look for the gold, the wealth. So what they're trying to do is, they're trying to make us sensitive to Qubba al Sakhra as Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. They want us to believe that that is Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. So when they destroyed Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, we wouldn't really know the difference and we wouldn't care, we wouldn't make much noise. At least Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, in our view, is still there. But no, that is Qubbat Al-Sakhra. That's the Masjid that was built by Umar ibn Khattab. So they asked the Prophet to describe Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. How many windows and doors and this and that. And the Prophet ﷺ said that these detailed questions now, he couldn't remember. Remember, when he went there, he didn't know that people were asking these questions. So he didn't go counting windows the night before, or doors. Well, he said, initially when Quraysh asked him, for some moments he was stunned. He couldn't say anything, because he had no answer. But then he said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sent Jibra'il ﷺ with a scale model, as we say, of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Of course, only the Prophet could see this, nobody else could see it. Again, Allah has power over all things. And as they asked him questions now about the physical building, he was able to you know, look at it and count windows and tell them, well, you know, so many windows and so many doors, and so on. So this indicates, as Ibn Kathir argues, that they understood, Quraysh understood from the Prophet ﷺ that he went body and soul on this journey. Not his soul only, or it's not a dream. You see, brothers and sisters, for his body to go on the journey, this is where the miracle is. For his soul alone to go, that's no miracle. Well, all of us, when we sleep, our soul leaves the body and wander around. Dream, as I said, anything can happen in a dream, mashallah. And you've had dreams, right? You've had weird dreams, doing weird things in all over the place. Yeah? But for your body to go, that's the miracle. Inshallah, I will stop here. There are some other issues I need to discuss, but it will take more time. Let's stop here, though. So next time we can continue from here and deal with the other issues about uh, Masjid, uh, this journey, Al Isra Al Mi'raj. Um, you know, there are issues like why? Why did the Prophet pray there? Why did he go there? Why was he the leader of all the prophets in prayer? Okay, we have to talk about these things, Inshallah. But Inshallah, we'll stop here. It's already 7:30, and we will uh, leave some time for some questions. But next time, inshallah, when we meet, we will continue discussing these other issues 